He's created on Saturday Night Live, and this Wednesday he'll be hosting the MTV Video Music Awards. He'll be going into its seventh, is it seven seasons? Well, it's unbelievable on the show this fall. Uh, please welcome the most excellent Dana Carvey, ladies and gentlemen. Is that a normal crowd? This would be the normal crowd. This yeah. is every night you've got this. Every night we this have this. A par party on! <laughs> and good night. Good to see you there. I, I, I feel funny like when I used to climb the rope in gym class. <laughs> it's from the movie. I'm well, sorry. I've seen this show. My chair is so far forward. I'm like, anyway, Jay, I. Uh... <laughs> anyway, you ready for this? I'm out of control. Okay. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, thank see, you. You know what I like about you? You wear the same thing to come over my house that you do to come on the show. <laughs> and that's what I like. It's very casual. Just went through the closet today. People yeah. wouldn't real. I actually washed these clothes today and cleaned them and ironed them. Now I have them on and they're just real cute tops. And you, and you, uh... Well, that's my wife said. I always ask my wife before I leave, is this a nice thing to wear? And she goes, that's a cute top. <laughs> and I said, honey, I wear a shirt. I don't wear a cute top. Yeah, that's the thing. You never nice. see two drunken cowboys in a bar going, hell, you got a mighty cute top on today, bud. <laughs> You just don't see it. Suddenly, I'm Regis Feldman, and you don't see it. <laughs> There's all these reds. <laughs> it's improv. It's wild. Oh, my God. I just like, a huge spittle thing came out. Sorry. You're, you're doing fine. You, re you relax. I'll get a travel line out here. We'll take a break. <laughs> Am I and really we'll be right back with Dana Carvey, ladies oh, that was and gentlemen. Cool. We'll be right back with more of Dana Carvey and his cute talk. Welcome back. We're talking with Dana Carvey. This is such a great crowd. Because these people, now you guys have been at barbecues all weekend and stuff, right? Right, this is. It's Labor Day and kind of loose. Yeah, yeah. They're a little toasty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kidding. There's no jobs to go to tomorrow, right? <laughs> well, we're gonna do something about that, Jay. <laughs> we got a, we got a plan to make things. Now, a lot of people don't think that I know about the youth of America. <laughs> but listen, I know about your problems, your homework, your parents, and of course, acne. Whether to use Stridex medicated pads or Oxy-10, but you gotta ask yourself, what would you rather have, a few more pennies or a few less zits? I think you... You know what's funny, though? When I go to the comedy clubs, and I, and I see that, you know, the, yeah. the, the young comics and stuff doing Bush, they're doing you doing Bush. I don't even know who I'm doing, though, really. <laughs> I mean, you know, I like to abstract. I mean, George Bush uh, doesn't go, not gonna do it, not gonna do it. Okay. Got that. That's why when I, no, you know what, people are starting to do you now. They're doing me? Well, yeah. Well, the basic Jay Leno is you, this basic thing like this, right? <laughs> now, well, but the fun of doing you is abstracting the fun, you. The, the fun. The fun and the joy. Right, right the fun. <laughs> my buttocks are tingling, my God. <laughs> the fun of doing it. Well, I just goofed and I thought if you abstract your voice, be, you would need an interpreter. So it's like, uh, hi, Jay. Yeah, so I think it, you know, I can be an answer. <laughs> Clever. No, it's, it's an abstraction. And you, and you go, what, what did he say? And the interpreter goes, well, Jay says he likes your act and he thinks you're a very good comedian. Yeah, I think it was. I think it could be in there. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just oh, I no. Look, this is what I love about impressions. They always say when they meet the guy, they go, no, see, we really like you. We're having fun with you. <laughs> and then you sneak in the club and they're just hammering you. They're just hammering you. No, no, you think, I mean, everyone I've done is, everyone I've done is like this. You know, right. Regis Philman, he's doing me more than I'm doing me. <laughs> Every time I do me, I'm doing him doing me, you know. Well, didn't you go to the White House? Didn't you? Didn't yeah, you... I was in the White House with uh, George and... and, and did, did you do him yeah. for him? Yeah, I was doing it with him. I go, how you doing, Mr. President? <laughs> do that but you've got to exaggerate it right, and right. there is the funny part right 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 <laughs> well how about clinton do you 
I don't really, I don't really do. Because Hartman does a pretty good Clinton too. Phil Hartman does a brilliant uh, Clinton. I Clinton is like, um, I didn't know he was going to get elected until my mom said, "Oh, he's cute." Oh yeah. <laughs> He's like Elvis. His nickname is Elvis. We're, we're voting Elvis in for president, basically. He's like, I swear to God, I want a tax cut right now. Thank you. Has Elvis ever failed? <laughs> no, when you, uh... Thank you. My Bill Clinton. <laughs> you were the first guy, I guess, to do the... the uh, when you did the Perot, when he first ran, you did the, uh, uh, the, the silly underwear thing. Now, you heard from him. Didn't you hear from him? I Perot? heard from Ross Perot, and I, I, really, I really liked him. He called me up, and I, I miss having Ross Perot in the race yeah, because yeah. he had such a great personality for comedians. I mean, the guy, he has the personality of an ornery hardware store owner. You know what I mean? <laughs> but in a friend, you go, hey, uh, excuse me, I'd like to buy a hammer. Well, here's the deal. See? <laughs> We got all kinds of hammers. Now, I don't know what kind of hammer you want, unless you tell me what kind of hammer you want. Now, you go down there, it says H-A-M-M-E-R. You get me a hammer. Because I can't deal with a hammer unless I can see it, taste it, feel it, touch it, eat it, and pass through my lawn. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> now, the thing is, you know, is, is he running or isn't he running? He's, right. he's still kind of running. He's on the ballot. Yeah, he's on the ballot. And he's, and he's out there going, now, in the 11th hour, my legions will do my bidding. See? Now, if you don't know what that means, it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz, where the Wicked Witch had those monkey people, see? <laughs> and I'm kind of like the Wicked Witch, and my followers are like those monkey people, and they will fly, 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 see? <laughs> and by the way, I do do a good Wicked Witch, if you think about it. I'll get you, Dorothy, and your little dog, too. <laughs> That is spot on perfect. I had the team of scientists test it, and that is spot on exactly like the Wicked Witch. I used to do a little work, but I'm not Fred Travelina here or anything, but no, I, I'm no. pretty happy. You ever think, what if the Tin Man worked at a car wash, Jay? You ever think about that? I never, I never thought about it, actually. So every comedian no. had a Wizard of Oz bit, and that was something about that. Anyway. Right. We'll find out some more about your personal life right yes, after this. Right Dana Carvey, ladies and gentlemen. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno will continue in a moment. Welcome back. We're talking with uh, Dana Carvey. Now, you, the world's greatest audience. They are the finest audiences and modest crowd, too. I love them all. I love them all. Well, I mean it. Well, you know, I mean, you know. Anyway, yes. You were in Europe for a while this summer? I know. It sounds so grandiose. I'd never been anywhere in my life except Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted me to go to uh, England and promote Wayne's World. All right. And so they were paying for everything. So I went on the Concord with my. Well, because they're paying for it. It's like oh, a yeah. zillion dollars. <laughs> well, I'm not cheap, but it's like, you know, $900 per second, you know. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a British airway, you know. And you're on this thing, and it says, we're now going to proceed to Mach 1. And illuminated in front of you is the speed. It goes 560, 580, 600 miles an hour, all the way up to 1,400 miles an hour. Wow. Now, I don't trust the premise of a plane up that high anyway. So I'm having a couple of Bloody Marys, and I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Halfway across the Atlantic, I'm going, faster, faster, faster. <laughs> You know, and I'm up there. It's all automated. These three English guys are up in the cockpit. You go up and talk to them. And they're just kind of sitting back, looking the other way. And I'm going, I go, do you guys know how to fly? And they go, not a clue. <laughs> we got one button that says England, right? <laughs> so when you first go to a foreign country, because I'm really in tune with voices, and I right. thought people were putting me on. I mean, the guy at the hotel is like, like to lead you to your room, sir. <laughs> Is that the way you talk, really? You know? And um, then the British press is there, which was very funny, because they didn't quite understand Wayne's world. So these very intellectual British people were going, um, I'd like to ask you both a question. Um, when you say monkeys might fly out of your butt, <laughs> this is actually, is that a metaphor? Or do primates actually leave the botic area? You know, like, Really true. And I was on, a, I was on, a, I was on one of the one of the chat shows. Yes, the chat and, and shows. And the guy was talking, and there was a ventriloquist on, and he asked the ventriloquist, <laughs> who's American, and he said, I understand you are quite influenced by the Howdy Dowdy program. <laughs> <laughs> it's the know, Howdy like, Dowdy. Yes, Howdy Dowdy. Now we had they assigned a car for us. And we had a driver named Ted, the nicest guy I've ever met. He would apologize three times before he spoke, every time, in the car, because we were totally casual. Right, like, right. where do we go? Who's the queen, you know? And, 
Yeah, so you got, went up before you went we there. We didn't know yeah. anything. We got Mickey Mouse watches, Gap clothes, and cameras. Whoopee! What? <laughs> and this guy's driving around. We're like, wow, we have a driver. He's like, if I might say, if I could possibly interrupt, if I could <laughs> yeah. say, what? What? <laughs> And my wife and I are sitting there for five minutes. We're not saying a word. He goes, might I interrupt? <laughs> and I didn't know the exchange between a dollar and a pound. And right. I had this uh, per diem money. And I'm giving this guy all these pounds. He's like, oh, that's very generous, sir. <laughs> Every day he shows up. He's got a shiny new car. He's got a hairpiece, new teeth, you know. <laughs> I, I was giving him like 600 bucks a day, apparently. You know? right. He shows with the end of his wife, we're going to retire, thanks to you, sir. <laughs> But I love Ted. And then we went to Ireland to promote Wayne's World. Very strict country, you know. I, do, I don't know about all this swing business. The Archbishop's not too pleased. And I... But they got thank it you. over there? They got... I mean, they, they understood all the references? They, they loved it. They were really into yeah, it. Yeah. I, I can't believe it, but yeah. It's like the movie that would never go away. Who knew? I, I, I'm, I'm surprised anyone likes it. But I meet little kids who see me without my Garth wig on. They start crying. Mommy, he not look like Garth man. <laughs> These I, are absolutely true. Are you excited about uh, the MTV Awards now? You're hosting this now? Well, I am hosting, are you hosting the MTV. yourself or as <laughs> I will be doing a myriad of characters. Oh, man. I will be doing a few characters, but I'll be doing myself. Now, did you ever open for rock bands, Jay? Yes, I used to open you know for how Rare I... Earth. Remember them? Rare Earth, yeah, and Bo Brummel. <laughs> Get ready! It's hard. I'm going to be between, like, Nirvana and Guns N' Roses out there going, um, you ever notice how, like, cats are really shy and dogs are friendly? <laughs> and they'll be like, you suck! <laughs> Slash! Axel Rose! <laughs> wow. Apparently some women want to have his baby up there. <laughs> They're screaming like it's serious. <laughs> I have to, he said. Comedian. Have you done these before? Have you done the MTV Awards? No, before? I've never done it before. I have no idea why they're having me do it, you know? Well, that's just... I'm just, I'm basically, it's going to be a trip, you know. And what are you I'm, doing, Adam, in New York or here? I'm going to do it at the Pauly Pavilion, the Pauly Shore Pavilion. Oh. And, um, <laughs> little joke. Okay, thank you. And uh, there's going to be like 10 raw, Eric Clapton's going to be there, Elton John, uh, Nirvana, uh, you know, and then you're going to have uh, Eddie Murphy and Mick Jagger. And you, and know. you you'll be there. And I'll be there, and I'll be uh, doing some of my, I, I did meet En Vogue earlier at a press conference. You know En Vogue, the oh, funky sure. Eagles? Oh, sure. Yeah. They're, they're so nice, and I came up to them, and I said, you know, you ladies are very attractive. And they looked at me and said, oh, you're never going to get it. Oh, you're never going to get it. I say, you don't have to rub it in or anything, you know. You're never gonna, never gonna, never gonna. And you signed, uh, you signed a big deal with us here at NBC? Look at the brand for this. The band's awake! The band is... The, the band finally woke up! They have, very, they have very specific comedic tastes. Yes, they do. You like that? You're never gonna, never gonna, never gonna, never gonna. Uh, but what does it mean when you say, never going to get it? Uh... <laughs> When you say never going to get it, is that like a metaphor? <laughs> and like it's, it's, Alrighty. it's sexual innuendo. Well, is there any other guests on, or can I keep going? No, no, no we got him on. We'll be back. Stay tuned for the music of Sophie B. Hawkins.